Welcome to News Hour. I'm your anchor, Jay Stoyan. In the news today, wow, we have a jam packed show. Before we get started, I just want to thank a lot of people, actually. They've really been uh, supporting us and, and coming to our rescue, if you want to call it that. Um, regarding TDC, we're expanding by the day, by the month, by the year. So we really want to appreciate all the people for helping us. Again, we're all about showcasing awareness, showcasing abilities regarding persons with disabilities, and we're kind of bridging the gap between the two communities. So you have your disability community in your non-disability community and this is where we come together and make everyone whole so again i want to thank everybody for supporting us do join us on twitter at j stoyan that's at j a y s t o y a n and do check us out as we are live right now on our website www.thedisabilitychannel.ca please do leave us comments suggestions we're always trying to improve and this is an information channel so send us your uh, questions and we have a, a vast uh, array of experts and consultants who will be more than happy to get back to you you can email me at Jay Stoyan or uh, j at the disability channel.ca again on twitter at j stoyan in our website www.thedisabilitychannel.ca we have so much to get into before we do we have a packed lineup today's our first show of the day and we have after us we have uh, wild child with our host shane smith wonderful dynamic individual and a great host by the way i believe he has a rapper on after that we have um let's chat with cynthia cynthia stone she's going to be introducing two huge and dynamic difference makers to our lineup. One is Bring Back the Game with Todd Kirstead and Racing with Autism with Austin Riley. So we are very excited. I'm not gonna give you too much information because that's what Cynthia is gonna do. And then we're gonna wrap it up by bringing on uh, Todd with his Bring Back the Game. This is very exciting. As we're expanding, Todd was yesterday at Variety Village. Very excited. I wanna thank Archie Allison for um, the hospitality. It was wonderful. Again, you can go to our website, you can check it out. So we have lots to talk about today. I do wanna just talk about our movement and our little interaction within the community, the Canadian and Ontario community that is. We, um, we're really in, in talks right now with Shriner, just a wonderful organization. They are uh, uh, in details with youth and health. They have three hospitals, one in Montreal and two in the U.S. So hopefully we're going to be doing some exciting things with the Shriners organization. Also the Green Party, we met a couple weeks ago with the Green Party. Wonderful leader, Ontario leader, Mike Schreiner. He was, uh, him and his crew, very hospital, uh, hospital to us. So we really thank Mike again with the Green Party. Uh, we have, uh, we brought on some new, some new uh, people to our crew. We want to thank Julian. He actually works at Real Sports down here in Toronto. So he's our, one of our camera guys. We want to thank him. He's a fantastic young gentleman. Again, Julian, thank you very much. We're also going to be introducing a couple more shows besides Racing with Autism. Again, Racing with Autism is based on a 16-year-old boy, Austin, who does have uh, autism, and he is one of Canada's top race car drivers. This kid will blow you away. It blows me out. Watch the videos. You can check him out. Austin Riley. So we're very excited. We also have a new show starting, and this is where we're, we're crossing the borders now. Now we're going down into the U.S. We have a wonderful show starting, Talk the Walk, by Richard Luby. He's going to be one of our disability consultants slash experts. So you want to call in and ask him questions regarding a vast array of disability questions. I'm sure he'll help you out. Watch for his show. He's going to be joining our lineup. We also have a new show starting, which we're very excited, called Road to the Games. Now, it's still in the works, but it's going to be debuting soon. And that's going to be focused on um, the Paralympics and para-athletes. So this is really exciting. We're going to you know, get our information uh, courtesy of the Paralympics organization. We're going to be doing features on athletes, clips, videos, and, of course, following the Road to the Games 2016 down in Rio. So. We have quite a few uh, shows joining already existing shows, including obviously the News Hour, um, Wild Child Records, Let's Chat, uh, the Nick Show. Let's talk a little bit about the Nick Show. The Nick Show. He is our youngest host. His name is Nick, and he has high functional autism, and he's a gamer, and a good gamer, by the way. And he's just—it's really exciting because when you're when you're talking to a nine-year-old boy, and I'm not nine, I'm a little bit older. He has so many great ideas coming from a, a, a vast and, a, you know, a different perspective. So again, the Nick show, high functioning autism. I know he's a superstar in his own school. And actually, if you want to find out how the show 
has affected Nick in a positive way, do go to our website as his mom has posted a new blog regarding Nick, autism, the show, and how he's really opened up um, confidence level, his self-esteem. So again, that's what we're all about. We're trying to um, not really teach people, just sort of show by example how we're just like everybody else. We want a chance, we want an opportunity, and we will succeed. Just give us that opportunity in life and we will succeed. So congratulations to Nick. Uh, do go to our website. You can find out all the shows, all of our personalities, all of our hosts. Are. I know they'd love to interact with you. So we're, we're very exciting. And a little thing what we're going to do, we're going to be having uh, a couple friends of mine, actually, um, close associates. We're going to be, uh, well, we've wrote a song, uh, and you're going to hear that song coming up in the next couple months. So, again, it's based on disabilities, all positive. It's going to be very exciting. So just keep in, keep in mind that, and we will be promoting that in the upcoming months. Um, I think we're going to uh, take a quick break, and then when we come back, we're going to get into the news. There's a lot of news going on uh, north and south of the border, and then we're going to sort of just filter down into uh, sports and entertainment. We've got to throw in a little bit of politics, obviously, that, as it's just dwarfing the news today. And then if we have time later on, I'm going to be bringing on uh, hopefully a guest, a guest in a bioenergy therapist, Daniel Dubajic. I know I just messed up his name. He's going to kill me, but stay tuned, and we'll be back with the news. Having my grandkids over is the highlight of my day. But it isn't all hugs and cookies. I also get to help raise them and teach good habits. I call it Grandma's Training Program. Whether it's safety in the backyard. No! Or staying clean. Don't forget to use soap or monitoring video game use. And I don't just mean limiting the amount they play. We all spend more and more time on these little devices and it can be really bad on our spine. Not long ago, I had neck surgery and it was during my physical therapy that another patient introduced me to the ab collar. I used the ab collar during my recovery to remind me to have good posture during my daily exercises. And now, it's an important part of Grandma's training program. The ab collar is lightweight, portable, and easy to put on. But best of all, it serves as a great training tool to teach the boys how they're supposed to sit while playing their video games. And now, I hardly ever have to remind them at all. I want to help my grandsons grow up healthy and strong and make good decisions. And the ab collar is helping me do that. Welcome back to News Hour. I'm your anchor, Jay Stoyan. Let's get right into the news. I want to start off by uh, Justin Trudeau and his little kerfuffle there with the media. He was at a First Nations event, and as far as we understand, they had a real tight lip on who was allowed in as far as media, a lot of guidelines on what to shoot, what not to shoot. And I believe there was only two organizations allowed into the First Nation uh, uh, conference, which was, I think it was Vice, and a New York-based media outlet. Uh, why would you let a New York-based media outlet up here ahead of Canadian media? So I think what's happening is not only did Justin Trudeau fleece a lot of the Canadians to vote for him, but now he's fleecing the media. So I think a lot of people just got caught underneath his spell of his good looks, his youthfulness, and his hair. Again, the jury's still out on Justin Trudeau, but we are watching you, Justin. And you know what? Actually, we've been calling your office now for a good eight months, and we haven't returned, a, haven't received a call back as we'd like to sit down with you and discuss our channel and the persons with disabilities and see what we can do together as a whole, as Canadians, and try to make uh, it better for everybody. So we're waiting your call, Justin. I know you're not going to call me, but perhaps somebody from your office could call me, like the Green Party called me, and we went and sat down with him. So we're waiting along with PC, the Progressive Conservatives, and Charles Souza and Kathleen Wynn. We've also put calls into both of you guys. We're waiting to have a meeting because what we want to do, we have a platform now, a television platform, and we belong on a channel right beside uh, the Pet Network, Women's Network, BET, TVO. Uh, you know, you have the Pet Network on there, which is great. I'm all about pets. I love pets. I think they're great. You know, I have a dog. 
but uh, we should also have a, a place there for uh, persons with disabilities because you'll see our shows from autism to brain injury to the news to the community to youth we're really trying to make a difference and we'd appreciate the support so justin give me a call or email me j at the disability channel dot ca um, a couple weeks ago i talked about the the kerfuffle regarding autism and the funding and below five above five I think what's happening now, due to the backlash, I think they, maybe they're shifting their, their focus a little bit. Again, I don't know too much about it because um, I'm not really an autism guy, even though I really, really, we really do support it. There is autism people on our, on our team that know information, but I just wanted to follow up with that quickly and just say, I hope they're gonna reconsider because uh, you do need support after five years old as a person with autism. I'm just, I would assume, I'm, I'm assuming, but I think you do. So again, let's do something for the families with autism. They're dearly, uh, you know, in need. So let's help them out. What is going on with Toronto gang wars? Did you guys see that in a paper the other day regarding the condo? 17 year olds were kidnapped and it, it's just crazy. I, I don't like, I mean, I imagine the people that kidnapped them probably weren't much older, maybe early 20s, late teens. But what is going on with the extreme violence in Toronto and guns? And it goes back to family. It goes back to the family. Because I tell you right now, if you have two parents in the house, well, their duty and their job and their responsibility is to teach kids uh, respect and to respect the law. And... How can you be that violent and that angry as a young teen? I don't get it. Or do they think it's a game, like the video games, and there's no consequences? There is. And they'll find out now, because I believe the, the police uh, services, which are amazing, by the way. Congratulations to our cops. I think they caught them already. And now their whole life has changed. One little mistake, or one big mistake, two seconds can change your life for, uh, forever. So be careful. And you know what? Those two seconds can all go, also go for the disability community. You can become disabled in two seconds. So please open up your heart, understand what we're doing because it could happen to you. One slip or anything like that and you could be disabled, which we'd never like to see, but I'm just saying it can happen to anybody. Um, let's talk a little bit about, I wanna talk a little bit about PC, political correctness. I don't know what's going on. Like I love the way People are more conscious of other people's feelings. I think that is brilliant. That's great. But it can also go overboard. Like, I think you have to be, have a little bit of a backbone and be able to take criticism or even nasty comments a little bit. Like, whatever happened to the saying, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Now, that's how I grew up. And I think actually my parents, when I was younger, they said, don't let the words bother you. Just let it flow. And, you know, but today it just seems a whole new level of intolerance and, and, and freedom of speech is, is being uh, bullied and being attacked. Come on, people. Like, you're allowed to have an opinion. You don't have to agree with the opinion. And I know some people are mean and nasty, but just... Get rid of them out of your life or just ignore it or, or move on because the real world is not like high school or university or elementary school. So these professors and teachers and uh, the school board who are teaching tolerance, I think they're really giving today's kids a bad rap because in the real world, it is not like that. When you go to get a job for, you know, an employer and he says, you do this, 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 and this, and if you don't, you're out. Or if you complain, you're out. That's real life. So I think people have to maybe find a happy medium where, yeah, you shouldn't abuse and bully people. I totally agree with that. At the same time, got to be a little tough. Got to be a little tough and rough because you got to take it. I just, those are my, those, that's my feelings. Um... Let's move down to the U.S. now because it's just crazy down there regarding the four, I, well, I, was gonna, I guess the five candidates are still in the race from Hillary and Bernie to Trump, Cruz, and Kasich. So let's, let's do the Hillary side first. 
Uh, looks like she is going to be the nominee, perhaps, unless the uh, FBI gets a hold of her, which the media does not talk about at all, which is just a disgrace. It is a disgrace how the media protects Hillary Clinton, even from Bernie Sanders, who's a so-called Democrat, even though he is an independent. But right now, uh, I think she's really, really taking it, or he's taking it to Hillary, saying you're either, like for the Democrats, so they're split, you're either big money or you're for the nine to five workers, what is it? And he, that, what that means is Hillary's for big money, who, who still will not release her transcripts, will not release her transcripts from Goldman Sachs for $225,000 speaking uh, fees. Why don't you release them, Hillary? Because there's something on those transcripts that she does not want to get out. I mean, or you'd release them. It's obvious. The media doesn't say nothing. The media just skates right by, doesn't say anything. And not only that, but they're starting to scold Bernie now on, do you have to be so mean? Why do you have to say that stuff? Because he is speaking the truth. Hillary is bought. She's establishment. She hasn't driven her own car, allegedly, like since the early 80s or late 70s. And she thinks she can relate to the people? Are you kidding me? The way she stood up and barked at Donald Trump by saying, oh, he lives in his high tower, he jumps in his plane, la, la, la. Well, you know what, Hillary? He earned it. He has a multi-billion dollar business that he worked for, which he employs, I believe it's 22,000 people currently. So yeah, maybe he does jump in his plane and sits in his high tower, but he deserves it because he worked for it. Whereas you, I don't think you've had a job other than being a politician, which really isn't a job. All it is is grabbing, grabbing, grabbing. Please, please, can you donate? Can you donate? Like I read the other, uh, I heard the other week that senators they're allocated to spend 30 hours a week on the phone calling for money, calling donors for money, 30 hours a week. So when do you do your job? When do you do your job, uh, senators? It's just ridiculous. So Hillary, from that, and then she goes that when we left the White House, we were completely broke. Are you kidding me? You and when you and Bill left the White House, you were completely broke. That's going to come back to haunt you because you were not completely broke. Uh, but what they're not talking about, and this is, this is what possibly could sink her, is her foundation. That's why the FBI right now is taking so long in being extremely thorough, plus they have the gentleman who they gave immunity to who spilled the beans, I'm sure. So they already have the answers. So they're going to call in Hillary. And I, regarding the emails, there's probably nothing there. And if there is, they have to see if they can charge her. Regardless of that, the foundation, they want to see where the money came from. It's the breadcrumbs. Who donated the money to her foundation, to the Clinton Foundation? What did they get in return, meaning access or favors? And did they put any of these donations in their personal pockets? That's what the FBI is going to do. And if they find that she did something illegal, I believe the director of the FBI, James Comey, he's going to recommend to Loretta Lynch, who's the attorney general, to say... She broke the law, you have to charge her. And we all know that Loretta Lynch is in the back pocket of Barack Obama, but Barack's not too happy with uh, Hillary these days, I don't think. So he might not be the, the knight in shining armor for um, Hillary that everybody thinks. It's gonna be interesting. I still think she's gonna win the nomination and then she's gonna go up against the Republicans who we'll talk about now. So let's talk first about Cruz and Kasich. Uh, Cruz did two really confusing things over the past week and a half. One was that he kind of made an alliance, kind of, with John Kasich, meaning tell your voters not to vote in this state and I'll tell my voters not to vote in that state. But I think that has completely fallen apart and I think John Kasich regrets every moment from this day on making that alignment because I don't really under, I don't think he really understood what he was doing. And if you watch the politics now, it's almost like Cruz continues to push Kasich out. So I, I don't think he's too happy. And then Cruz nominates Carly as his VP. And it's like, uh, first of all, you're not even going to win a nomination. 
Like, you're not even going to win a nomination because we'll get to Trump in a little bit, but you don't have the votes. You don't have the delegates. It's going to be um, the first ballot, not anymore. So you're kind of, you kind of picked a date to the prom that you're not even invited to. So it's going to be, it's bizarre. It re really is bizarre. And now you see the establishment coming on Trump, who we'll talk about. He just won five, uh, five states, Connecticut, Delaware, uh, a couple other ones in, in Northeast. Just cleaned up with 60% and over. Plus he won New York a couple weeks ago. And now he's in California, which they had a huge protest last night in California. And if you notice the, or not a huge um, protest, a huge rally. I think there was like close to 30,000 people in the stadium. And then there was a slew of protesters outside. And this is what I don't get about the media. Uh, Donald Trump pays for these events. All the people that come to see Donald Trump are people who want to vote for Donald Trump. So they're his guests. You could say they're his friends, associates, and voters who are coming to listen to Donald Trump. They're not coming to cause problems for the person they're voting for. But outside are paid protesters a la George Soros who pays these people to go and cause problems at the events. And last night there was violence. But what I don't get is the media constantly blames Donald Trump for the protesters outside. It's not his people. It is organized thugs paid by George Soros to disrupt the event. Why do you not report it truthfully? Well, we all know why, because you're all in the tank for Hillary. It's, it's really disgusting. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. So, I don't, we're going to watch it closely. I know, you know, I'm a big political guy. I try not to pick sides, but all I'm saying for Donald Trump or anybody else that he's the only politician left that's not on a take. Besides Bernie, but Bernie's a communist or a socialist, same thing. So he's not going to get in because all he wants to do is give away everything for free. That would be wonderful in fantasy land, but somebody's got to pay for it. And who's going to pay for it? The people who have jobs. So that ain't happening. I mean, he's dead anyway. He's dead in the water anyway. So there's just so many different policy things like, um, let's see. Now there's the woman's card, the racial aspect, the economy, the wall, foreign policy, which is abysmal. The foreign policy, Barack Obama's foreign policy is, is a disaster. As you can see, he just sent over 250 troops, which he announced, which I'm sure the competition or the rivals, ISIS, I'm sure they love to hear that. 250 highly regarded soldiers are being sent over to Iraq and Syria, and now they know. But it just goes to prove, like, and how many, we really don't know if it's 250. Yeah, there could be 5,000 troops there. You think he's going to tell us? I don't think so because of his policy. His policy back in 2012 was, we need to win the election. I got to build on my legacy. I said everybody's going to come out, so let's take him out. And now you have ISIS. Just a disaster. Disaster, disaster. Um, I think what we're going to do, we're going to move along. We're going to get a little bit lighter. Okay, we're going to get a little bit lighter. We're going to come back. We're going to talk some sports and some entertainment, and if we have time, we're going to have on the bioenergy therapist, Daniel. So stay tuned, and we'll be back with the news. Well, I've been lucky enough to have met some incredible people uh, in my lifetime. Uh, I'm sitting here on Necker Island, where we've had Nelson Mandela, Kofi Annan, um, Archbishop Tutu, uh, President Carter, um, and I'm name dropping for a good reason, because I think that uh, of the 10, uh, people that I, I find most inspirational in the world, uh, Tally is one of them. Um, she's an extraordinary person. Um, she was born with, uh, with, with dreadful deformity and, uh, and, uh, and she's just overcome it in the most, in the most incredible way. Um, she's a wonderfully inspirational person. Uh, we all love her enormously. Uh, she's determined to make a difference in the world. Uh, she's an inspirational person, she's an inspirational speaker, um, and I would uh, wholeheartedly recommend her to anybody. Um, and uh, while, I'm, while I'm speaking here, just big, big, big hugs and big love, Tally. Welcome back to the news. Okay, we're going to skip along a little bit. We're going to do some sports, but I think we are going to have on the bioenergy therapist, Daniel Dubaij. There you go. Uh, a little bit later on the show, he's very, very interesting fellow, and I'm, I'm, 
I'm very intrigued by what he's doing these days, and I think you will be too. Again, it's going to be uh, something new for me, so I'm, I'm going to be asking a lot of questions, and uh, I'm a little bit from Missouri, <laughs> if you know what that means. So I'm very excited to have Daniel on, and, and he was blowing my mind off stage a little bit, to tell you the truth, but let's, uh, let's wait for later in the show. Let's talk some sports now, and there's so much going. This is like, I think April and October are the best times of the year for, for sports people, and I'm a... I'm a sports guy, so I'm just in my uh, glory right now. Let's talk. Congratulations to the Marlies. They uh, sweep the series against Bridgeport 3-0, three, three so that's great. I love the Marlies. Uh, Connor Carrick, the guy gets five points last night. I think he got a hat trick and two assists. And he's actually the gentleman we picked up from Washington for the Daniel Winnick trade. So, I mean, we also pick up Locke, too, but I don't think he's going to be here next year. But, hey, Carrick, I mean... That's great. I mean, I love our prospects down there. It's very exciting. Uh, leading, of course, by Nylander, but I believe Hyman scored last night. We have a lot of good guys. Sashi's down there. The only thing I think we're kind of lacking is our goaltending. I don't know if Garrett Sparks is actually the goal. I mean, I'd love to give the guy an opportunity. He did okay, but you could tell he still needed some seasoning. Uh, Bibido, he got pulled last night uh, or the other night, so I don't know... He's still a little young. Goalies take a long time to develop, so you never want to get rid of the guys. But we'll see. And we're still years away, but it's looking very exciting. Obviously, the draft is coming up Saturday. We all want the number one pick. We all want Austin Matthews. But the top three picks are, are regarded as, as, as full-flight players. They could step into the NHL right away. They got two Finns who are big and big and strong, can skate. I'm just a little leery because they play in the Finn League. I know it's a good league. I'm just saying it's not the OHL. It's not the NHL. So, you know, got to wait and see. But they are comparing the two Finns to Yari Curry and Timo Solani. So that is very high praise. But I would still go with Austin Matthews. Edmonton cannot get the first pick. I'm sorry. Like, they had five out of the last seven first picks. They are still a disaster. But I think they're going to be changing... I predict Eberle's going to be gone. Ryan Nugent Hopkins is going to be gone. Uh, Yakupov's going to be gone. They got to do something. They don't need all guys that are the same. Like they all, they're all the same except for, of course, you got your quarterback, Connor McDavid, and then his wide receiver, um, Taylor Hall. So those two guys are like, you know, bona fide. But let's keep our fingers crossed. I think if the Leafs get Austin Matthews, which they have a 20% chance to get him higher than anybody else in the draft, obviously, because we finished last. Uh, I think with him on the lineup, you don't hear too much about Steven Stamkos. I know he had the blood clot. Let's pray that his health is good, regardless if he signs with us or not. You know, we don't want to make sure he's healthy. And if he does sign with us, he's still, and he's just entering his prime. He would be the captain. He would set the tone. He would be our first uh, first line center. Slide in Austin Matthews number two. Slide in Kadri number three. Mitch Marner. He can't play in the AHL this year. He's too young, and he's he's already dominated the O for two years in a row. So I don't know if I'd really send him back there. If he's gonna play for the Leafs, he's got to play. He can't play three minutes a game. He's got to play. So. Put him on a fourth line center, uh, probably not. I like what Babcock used to do in Detroit, the way he used to, they used to bring up players and put him on the wing for the couple of years just to get comfortable with the league and then slide him over to the NHL. I think that would be great. I think Mitch could do wonders. I just love our team. I shouldn't say our team, but I just love the Toronto team because they are finally taking their time being patient, developing our prospects, and let's hope picking right. Like Mark Hunter, he is a draft guru. So let's hope that we're finally on the right path and we have to commend Brendan Shanahan. I mean, he is just doing wonders. Who would have thought he could get Lou Lamarillo, Lam, uh, Lou Lamarillo to be our general manager and Mike Babcock to be our coach? So, And you know what? We have lots of cap space. So we're going to make some signings, some, I don't know about trades, but I'm sure we're going to sign a few guys. But again, we might still have a tough year this year. I'd rather have a tough year but go in the same, same direction than pull a Brian Burke and skip over the plan and make it crazy. And then, you know, we get guys like Phil Kessel. 
Who's doing fabulous in Pittsburgh, by the way? Even though I was not a Fat Phil fan, you know, and I don't think none of us in Toronto were after a certain amount of time, he's done good in Pittsburgh. So congratulations to Phil. Pittsburgh and how about Pittsburgh and Washington? Woo! What a series. The two best players in the league are going head-to-head. -head. Ovechkin, I think Ovechkin is the closest thing I've seen in the league since Eric Lindros. Before Eric Lindros had his concussions, he dominated the NHL like nobody, obviously since Wayne, but in a different way. He would drive you through the boards and then score the winning goal. Wayne Gretzky would just score all the goals. He wouldn't really drive you through the boards. But Ovechkin's a little bit or a lot like Eric Lindros. He is so powerful. He will drive you through the boards. Let's just hope that he doesn't get payback and someone does it to him because the NHL needs him. He has a one-timer like nobody. Uh, on the other side, Chris Letang, I was really impressed with him the other night. He was on the puck. He was hard, playing hard. And, of course, I love to see Sidney Crosby be Sid, even though I'm not a, you know, I'm not really a Sid fan. I think it's great for the NHL. I'm, I'm really glad that he's, I guess he's returned to old form. Who knows what it was early in the year, but he wasn't doing too well. So Malkin's back. So that's a great, great series. Uh, the other series, of course, is, is Tampa. Eh, I don't know. Tampa, I don't know. Eh. Not bad, not bad, but without Steven Stamkos, I don't think they're going to go too far. Move over to the other league, uh, the other conference, St. Louis and Dallas. St. Louis might be, they might take it all. They are huge. And when you beat out the champ, you know, you beat the champ, you want to be the champ, you got to beat the champ. And they beat the champ. So Ken Hitchcock has those guys flying on all colors. Their defense is great. From Boymeister to that new guy, that tall, skinny guy, or the, the I don't know, his name is Parenic or something like that. But... This guy's a, just a stud of an offenseman, and he's huge. He's like Chara. So good for St. Louis. Up against Dallas, Jamie Benn, terrific hockey player, but they need Tyler Seguin back. I don't know if he's coming back, because I think he hurt his Achilles again. But I haven't heard too much. The other teams, uh, San Jose, good for San Jose to finally get over the hump. Finally get over the hump. They beat LA Kings, and look at Nashville. Nashville uh, stuck it to Anaheim. Uh, Bruce Boudreaux was actually let go today. I think that was his seventh, sixth or seventh seven, uh, Game 7 series, and he's never, hasn't won one. So it's unfortunate for Bruce. I think he's a good coach, but I think they have to get over the hump. In order to get over the hump, they had to make a change. And, um, I mean, they got the, they have the dynamic duo in, in Corey Perry and Ryan Getzlav in their ninth year. So they're still got a lot of time, but they're getting along. Plus, they already won the Cup, so good for them. It's going to be exciting. I love the playoffs. We'll talk a little bit. Uh, let's change sports a little bit. Well, let's see what else. Hold on. Before I do that, yeah, we talked about the, the draft. Uh, again, at 7 o'clock on Saturday night, I'll be in front of the TV with my popcorn and my pop and watching the game. Let's go Leafs. Get that first pick. It's good for the team. It's good for the league. The NHL, the Leafs are the most popular team in the NHL around the world. They're like a Dallas Cowboy or the New York Yankees, but they're even better when they're doing well. So let's hope they do well. It'll bring up sales for the rest of the league, obviously, because when you go around the league, you see Leaf jerseys in every rink, every rink. Let's change uh, courses a little bit. Let's talk about the Jays. I think they read their own clippings in spring training. I think they really said, well, you know what? Everybody's saying we're such a powerhouse. We almost got there last year. We're going to get there this year. Well, we have our problems. Let's start behind the plate. Russell Martin. Uh, he's been hurting. He hasn't been performing too well. But again, I don't really care if he performs well at the plate. Just perform behind the plate. Behind the plate. But he's hurting. He has a neck spasm. So he's, uh, you know, and then let's go to first base. Colabello, he's suspended for 80 games pretty much for the year. Maybe his career is over. Feel bad for the guy. Of course, we don't know the real, the real deal. Did he take uh, the steroids or the drugs knowingly or by accident if you heard him with Jamie Campbell great interview Jamie by the way on uh, Sportsnet you had to feel for the guy I mean you had to feel for the guy but you know people get caught they do cry so it's hard to say but he spent seven years in the International League finally got his chance did really well last year this year was a little slow but he's not the only one and then he gets this so I mean I 
I hope he uh, can come back and continue his career next year with the Jays or another team. Um, that's all I have to say about that. Let's go around the horn a little bit. Where I believe Devin Travis is going to be coming back soon. Boy, it's been so long since he played for us. Who knows if he's even... It's hard to even remember him. Josh Donaldson, he's been banged up a little bit, but he's still hitting those homers. What an MVP. He's our MVP. Uh, Troy seems to be coming around at shortstop. Has to get better. His hitting, his, his defense is amazing. Has to get better uh, at the plate. Move it around to um, the outfield. What can you say about Kevin Pillar? A superstar in the making. Just makes dynamic catches. Seems like every game. Seems like every inning. The guy's always just flying all over the field. Jose's Jose. He's our leader. He's, uh, I, I, like, I like his demeanor. He's just like a, he plays mean. Plays mean. He's our leader. Doesn't take any guff from the other players and hits bombs. Michael Saunders. He's been a pleasant surprise. I know he's a little bit banged up right now, but I think he's back in the lineup. So good for him. Our pitching. Our pitching is our Achilles heel, especially our bullpen. I think they're going to have to move Sanchez back to the bullpen. We have some substitutes. Gavin can fit in there. Gavin Floyd, who was almost a starter anyways. Hutchison, who won the game, and I believe he got sent down. So we have some guys. Our bullpen is just abysmal. I was never a Brett Cecil fan from day one. I don't know why people think he's so good. He can't strike out anybody, including my little sister. I know he's going to get better, but when? When? Storn, haven't been uh, impressed with him at all. I, I don't know if he's, uh, if he's able to adapt to the American League hitting, because there is different. Once you come over from the National League to the American League or vice versa, some guys can adapt, some guys can't. And so far, it doesn't seem like he's been adapting too well. So we'll see how it goes, but again, we can't get too far behind the eight ball. You know, we, we just can't keep on losing. Like for Chicago to beat us, I, I, think they, I think they sweeped us actually. You know, we were winning the first game five to one, but we can't get behind the eight ball too much because before you know it, and you know Yankees are gonna be there. You know Boston, Boston's actually got a good team this year. You know they're gonna be there. So we're, uh, you know, we're hoping they, they, they pull out. I'm sure they will. They got such a good team, but they just can't wait too long. You know, everybody said, well, it's still early, still early. Well, it's not that early anymore. April's almost over now, and before you know it, it'll be mid-May, and we'll be behind six games, and then who knows what's going to go. So let's hope the Jays can uh, come out of the tailspin and uh, start putting up some wins. Let's move over to the Raptors. They're playing tonight. They have a 3-2 lead. Who knows? They're Jekyll and Hyde. Who knows how they're going to do tonight? They're in Indiana. DeRozan finally uh, came through like the superstar he should be. I mean, that's what we pay them, pay him the big bucks, him and Lowry. But I tell you, and I've said this from day one, there are superstars, you know, they're Toronto superstars. However, I don't, I don't, I have a hard time believing they can match up against other teams' superstars like James Harden, LeBron James, uh, Kevin Durant, you know, the other superstars on the other team. I just have a hard time believing that our superstars can match the other team's talents. And right now, it doesn't really look like they can, but, you know, let's, let's hope they can put Indiana away tonight, which they should be. I hope it's not the curse of Reggie Miller. I still think about Reggie Miller when I think of Indiana. So I hope it's not the curse. Let's hope they can put them away tonight, get a little bit of a rest, and then take on the next seed. So uh, let's go Raptors. Uh, you, I mean, you guys had 56 wins. So, I mean, you shouldn't be having a problem with Indiana, but you are. So let's win tonight, put it away. Before we move on to music, the NFL draft, quarterbacks went one and two to the Rams and the Browns, I believe. Johnny Manziel got indicted for punching out his girlfriend twice. What a disaster this guy is. You know what? He's fed by a silver spoon. His dad's an oil uh, multi, maybe even a billionaire, but if not a multi-millionaire. And he thought, you know what? I'm Johnny Manziel. My dad's a multi-billionaire. I just won the Heisman. I'm it. I'm the man. Well, welcome to reality. You're not the man. You've lost your NFL career. You might be going to jail. I mean, for beating up your girlfriend, good for you if you go to jail. You know what? No one should ever touch a woman, ever. And you're, you're, you are got the world by the tail, Johnny. What are you doing? I, I don't get it. You're like, a, you're like Ryan Leaf now. You're, you're gonna go down as one of the biggest busts in the NFL history. Unfortunate, but you know what? You thought you were the man or whatever. I mean, we don't really know behind the scenes except for you did punch out your girlfriend, which is disgusting. 
So you get what you do, you know, you get what you pay for sort of thing. So unfortunately, let's move a little bit to uh, entertainment. Lots to talk in entertainment. Three albums are going to be dropping Toronto's own Drake. So Drake's going to be uh, dropping his album. I think it's, he's been rumored to be dropping it for a little while now. So I think he's just teasing his fans. Should be great. I mean, he's the ambassador for the Raptors. He's actually a very, other than maybe getting that in that incident a couple weeks ago regarding that photographer who was taking pictures, you don't really hear too much about Drake, which is a great thing, right? I mean, other than, other than music, I mean, which is great. But you don't really hear too much that he's getting into trouble. But, you know, he did start off in Degrassi. So he's been in the limelight his whole life, so he's a pro. He's a pro, so hopefully it's, you know, it's gonna be a great album. Beyonce is also dropping her album. Just a, 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 a beautiful lady. I don't really care for her music. I don't think it's uh, on par with um, the other great females of today, let's say, you know, from Madonna to, you know, passing of Whitney Houston to Natalie Cole, passing of her. Um, I just don't think she's on par. But she's a performer. She puts on a great show. She's beautiful. She wears great outfits. So, you know, and her husband's Jay-Z. So, you know, she's she's on the inside. So her album's going to be dropping. And, of course, the freak of nature's Rolling Stones. I mean, come on. Let's talk a little about the Rolling Stones. They're coming out with another album. How many albums is that? 600 albums? Let's talk a little bit about the Rolling Stones. Like, let's just talk about, you know, some of their greatest hits. From My, my personal greatest hit is... Uh, Miss You from Some Girls. I think that was released back in 78. I did see them at Steel Wheels. I think when I saw them at the, I believe it was, I think it was the uh, Sky Dome back in the day. Yeah, back in the day now, Roger Center. It was called the Sky Dome. I seen the stone. I seen uh, Steel Wheels. And back then, they were in their mid 40s. And I remember people were making fun of them then, saying, oh, these guys are dinosaurs. When are they going to retire? Well, now they're in their 70s. And they're rocking. I don't know how, how they do it. Like, how do they do it? Mick is just a phenom. And his partner, Keith, like, I mean, I don't want to say bad about Keith, but, I mean, the guy's got horseshoes. Like, the passing of so many artists around his age that I don't believe they indulged as much as Keith and Keith and Ozzy. Like, they just keep on going and going. So congratulations to them. I think that is great. I would love to go see them when they come to town. I know they love Toronto. So I would love to go see the Rolling Stones. Um, anybody want to take me? I'm in. I love I think they're great. Talk a little bit. I, I just love talking about music, mixing it up a little bit. Mutt Lang. Uh, where is he now these days? I guess uh, if you want a good album produced, call Mutt Lang. Just ask Shania Twain, ACDC, or Def Leppard. Back in the 80s and early 90s, the guy was hot, 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 hot. Too bad about the lead singer from ACDC. He had to retire. Otherwise, they told him he was going to go deaf, which is very un unfortunate. Uh, I'm, an I'm an ACDC fan. I remember when Black and Black came out in 1980. I was in my middle teens. Plus, I remember Bon Scott from Highway to Hell. And I mean, if you want to get, there's not too many, not too many groups today that can lose their lead singer and can, can continue on with success, just as in excess. But ACD's managed to do it. Uh, Journey's managed to do it. Um, probably a few other bands out there that are escaping me right now. But uh, let's hope uh, the lead singer from ACDC is OK. I want to talk a little bit about Prince. Obviously, big in the news this day. Could you imagine if the media gave as much exposure to Flint, Michigan, and the Chicago murders as they did to Prince? Like, that's where the United States, and I guess the rest of the world, are just messed up, and they just give too much credence and too much applause and too much love to celebrities who more than just praising their music, they think they're intelligent also. Hence Donald Trump, you know? You guys created them. You gave so much praise to them, to the people in Hollywood and big time people on TV that they're just so smart. Well, you got Donald Trump, you created them, media, and here he is. But getting back to Prince, I have to say this. Uh, it's alleged that he OD'd on his plane. They gave him that, that power shot to get him back to life and then he died in his elevator 
by himself. And it's alleged now that's coming out that he OD'd because he had, he had drugs on him or he OD'd. Now, I think it was a mixture of drugs and I don't think it was your typical overdose. I think it was medication, maybe some perks, a cocktail and died. But if he did commit suicide or he OD'd, I mean, come on, Prince. You got a half a billion dollars in the bank. What are you doing? You're 57 years old. And I'm a Prince fan, okay? For me, I mean, I, for me, he was no Michael Jackson. I know I'm going to get millions of tweets. Tweet me at Jay Stoyan. No Michael Jackson, no Beatles, no Frank Sinatra, and no Elvis. But he was brilliant. He was a true musician, as you obviously heard, heard testimonies from, uh, I believe it was Elton John and Eric Clapton and you know, the real heavyweights in music, how, how good Prince was as a guitar player, as a writer, as a performer. I just didn't, I wasn't really, really too crazy about his music, maybe Raspberry Beret or something like that. But, um, and I did see, you know, obviously I seen Purple Rain back in the 80s. So I think he was a great performer, but if he OD'd, I think, I don't know, I just want to say, you're a fool. You're a fool if you OD'd, if you knew what you were doing. If you didn't, I, you know, I feel for you and your family, but another great musician has left us. Like, what is going on with this? Just crazy. Uh, let's move it along a little bit. Led Zeppelin, I believe they got sued for a dollar over Stairway to Heaven by the original band that they were touring with back in the 70s. There's a song that sounded a little bit like Stairway to Heaven and Jimmy Page and Robert Plan, and I think they sort of, you know, uh, massaged it a little bit and came up with Stairway to Heaven, but the guy said, we don't want any money. That's okay. So I think they gave him a buck or something like that, and uh, Stairway to Heaven is still the best song of all time, or according to polls. Anyways, uh, why do musicians have to talk about politics on stage? I mean, no matter what, you're going to lose half of your crowd. Why do they do that? I don't, I don't get it. From John Bon Jovi to Bruce Clapton, or Bruce Clapton, Bruce Springsteen, <laughs> Bruce Springsteen, why do they do that? Like, why do you guys push your agenda on stage? Because you know what? Half the viewers out there, or half your audience, does not agree with you. They don't agree with you. So just play music and speak your opinion maybe off stage or somewhere else, or don't speak it at all. Or be uh, prepared for the consequences. Let's move a little bit into TV and film. Kelly Ripa and Michael. Wow, that was just a real barn burner there. As uh, Michael Strahan, if you haven't heard, is leaving uh, live with Michael and or Kelly and Michael in the morning. She, he's going to Good Morning America. Kelly Ripa, the the princess, uh, felt uh, slighted by not being told by Disney. I mean, yeah, she does have a point, but she also makes twenty million dollars a year. So you know what, Kelly, get over it. Why don't you go on your own? You don't need Michael. You don't need anybody. You're super talented. Just do your own uh, thing. But see the way the media just gets blown out of proportion. Maybe she didn't say anything. Maybe she was happy for Michael. Maybe, who knows? But the media just runs with it because they have to sell. Ratings, ratings, ratings. Um, I think I'm going to leave it with this, and then we're going to uh, take a quick break, and we're going to come back with our bioenergy therapist, Daniel Dubedge. He's going to be on in a little bit. Before we do take that break, I just want to say, uh, Will Ferrell, you should do some research if you want to do a comedy about Alzheimer's and Ronald Reagan. You're getting a lot of flack now. This is a disability channel. Take it easy, because if you're going to make people fun with people with Alzheimer's, you're going to hear from us. So uh, be very careful what you're doing out there in your career. Um, hmm, need some help, by the way. So stay tuned. And we're going to be back with our guest, bioenergy therapist, Daniel Dubajic. He's going to come on and blow our mind. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with the news.
Welcome back to the news. I'm your anchor, Jay Stoyne. Uh, stay tuned as our next show coming up will be Wild Child with host Shane Smith. He has a wonderful rapper on, rapper guest on, so it's going to be exciting. And then later in the day, we do have Let's Chat with Cynthia Stone. She's going to be interviewing, I believe, uh, Todd Kirstead from Bring Back the Game and Shane Riley from Racing with Autism. So very exciting show. We hope you can all tune in. Do find me at Jay Stoyan on Twitter, or you can go to our website right now and watch live, www.thedisabilitychannel.ca. We really appreciate all the comments and the support the, the, the community has been giving us as we're all about spreading awareness regard, uh, within the disability community. So let's introduce our, our guest. This is very exciting. We have on, uh, on this in studio today, bioenergy therapist, Daniel Dubaij. Daniel, thanks for coming on today. Really appreciate it. Thank you, pleasure to be here. So a bioenergy therapist. So tell myself and tell our viewers exactly what that is. Bioenergy is our life force. It's what we are. It's what uh, biologists were supposed to study, but uh, they can't see it. And at the time they didn't have machines to measure it. So they kind of went the other way. And how does that relate now to, I guess, what you do and in, to the health uh, industry and, and so forth and so on? Well, our bodies are incredible healers under the right conditions. So we live in a very toxic environment and with bioenergy therapy, we can raise your immune system, increase circulation, remove blockages so that your body can heal itself. Now, is this regarded by the health industry? Is this a licensed practice? Is this more of a guru practice? Is this frowned upon or, or uh, supported? I believe the most known of the energies is called Reiki. That would be something that most people are associated with, and they are using it at hospitals. And how long have you been doing it, Daniel? I've been doing it roughly for six years, and I've known about it for about 11 to 13. And how did you get involved with it? I had a serious back injury when I was younger, when I was 14, from 14 to 28, and um, the doctors told me I had degenerative disc disease, and they explained to me that it can't get any better uh, to stop my sports to stop my construction work, any physical activity, and then just try to maintain it. So I ended up uh, meeting somebody who fixed my back and um, I've been doing it ever since. So somebody who did bio, the, the bio energy therapy? Yes, uh, he was aware of it when he was born. He can see uh, colors around our body, which is our aura, and he can see where issues are, where problems are. Um, I think I had about seven or eight sessions with him and my back has never ever hurt since. That is truly, that is truly amazing because you, obviously you, you, you probably run into a lot of skeptics. All kinds. All kinds, right? Yes. And um, so d does your practice, can you apply to sort of anybody who has an injury or an illness or? It has worked with everything it just hasn't worked with everybody some people have certain blockages that we're just learning how to get over them um, i personally started with any kind of sports injury so anything that your body is going to recover from anyway it speeds it up drastically so give us can you give us any examples of, of the, your past associates or clients or people that you've worked on or helped or well i worked on somebody last year that was uh, supposed to go in for a root canal and uh, I was in Florida. She had seven days of antibiotics. She was supposed to take it for another seven days. And when she got back to Nova Scotia, where she's from, she was supposed to have a root canal. I worked on her for about 20 minutes and she hasn't taken a single pill since. And she canceled her root canal. I've worked on a friend of mine last week. She broke her heel. She has an x-ray saying that it was broken. We worked on her the day after it broke. And within about two hours, she was up and walking around. She went back to the doctors and they had no explanation. They said it was a bruise, wasn't broken anymore. And uh, a very big story that we're still doing right now, we're about halfway there, was uh, my friend's aunt. She was given two months to live uh, with leukemia. Uh, since our first session, she's been laughing, smiling, thriving. She feels like a million dollars. She's had two blood tests since, and her white blood cell counts and her red blood cell counts have both gone up both times and the doctors just are floored. They, they don't know what to say. And, and let me just add, like, I, those stories, I mean, blow my mind and they, you know, they're, they're amazing. But however, I bet you there's, like I said, there's gonna be a lot of people that are going, come on. Like, come on, really? Oh, I, I've got it in it from my, from my best friends. There's family members that refer to me as the witch. <laughs> um, these are things that I would love to help people with and I have no problem showing you how it works. 
and um, we've got documented evidence from the doctors that the lady had leukemia, two different tests. She went through radiation, she went through chemotherapy, um, documented. Do you think uh, we could do this? Because I'm, it's, it's very interesting, and, and, and what you're saying, like I, I totally buy into it. I, I'm always you know, open to new, uh, you know, new avenues, new paths, new remedies. If, and obviously our, our channel, I mean, there's probably a billion people that might be interested in hearing more about what you do. But what I would like to do is maybe um, the next time you picked up, pick up a, a client or an associate or a friend or family member and they've asked you to help them, I would love to actually get in depth and really document it from the start to finish just so we here at TDC can go like, wow, like it really does work. And not that I don't believe you. I just, you know, we need a little proof and because it's exciting. I would love to follow up with you when maybe you have your next client. You can give us the details and maybe we can come out as long as the person doesn't mind getting filmed, right? We can document it and would you be interested in that? I think that's a great idea. Um, what I'd actually like to do is if any of the viewers have any issues, we can take five to ten viewers, so they're random people, they're not my friends, so I'm not taking, handpicking anybody, and we can work on them from start to finish, document it, and just pick five or ten random people and document their journey. I think that would be actually better. That's a great idea. So again, for the viewers out there that are listening, uh, if you're interested in what Daniel, uh, his services are, and I believe you would do it, uh, well, I shouldn't tell you, but would it call, is there a cost to it? Um, I didn't have a cost when I started. I've been doing it for about five years, basically for free, and then I was doing it on a donation base. That's a great, that's a great idea. Yes. Maybe we can do, set up a little donation uh, platform and we can donate it to, you know, TDC, the different causes that we support, autism, brain injury, you know, whatever. I mean, we can talk about it, but I think, I think that's a great idea. So for our viewers out there who are listening, if you're interested in maybe contacting Daniel, just email me, j at the disabilitychannel.ca or go to our website. And if you're interested, we can put you in touch with Daniel. And like you said, we can document it and just see how it goes because um, from what you're saying, you could really help people, and that's what we're all about, helping people. So before I let you go, Daniel, if people do want to, can they find, where can they find you, on Facebook? They or? can find me on Facebook under Daniel Dubajic, D-A-N-I-E-L-D-U-B-A-J-I-C. Well, that's great, Daniel. We're definitely going to have you back, and like I said, let's do that. Let's document it, and let's, so again, for people, five or ten people are interested in finding out more about Daniel's services, do go to our website or tweet me at jstoyan. We'll pass you along to Daniel, and we'd really like to document this and shoot it. And if it's, you know, what Daniel says it is, wow, we have just maybe found a, a, another uh, another great source to help people. So, Daniel, I want to thank you for coming on today. Thank Wonderful. you, Jay. I want to thank our viewers for tuning in, our support staff here at TDC. Wonderful support staff. I want to thank Julian for coming in today. He uh, we had him working working away with. Uh, his camera, so we really thank Julian. And stay tuned as we have uh, Wild Child Records coming up with host Shane Smith. Do tweet me at Jay Stoyne or go to our website if you have any questions. We'd love to interact with you. And uh, we'll see you next time on the News Hour with Jay Stoyne.